They said Aspo. They said Woken. They didn't say what the hell is your name? Gary Crowley. Crowley. Gary Crowley. Crowley. In a way, I kind of lost myself in, in music, really. You know, when my parents split up, that became my thing. You know, Thursday night, Top of the Pops, that was such an event. Uh, you know, for me and my sister and my brother, um, with my dad occasionally putting down the uh, newspaper when trans people came on. Um, but I remember, uh, you know, the whole thing went up a few gears when my auntie, bless her, bought myself and my brother and sister our own little transistor radio. Uh, and Capital Radio had literally just launched. So um, that just became such a massive, massive thing. I just listened to Capital Radio 24 7. And I remember this episode of uh, All You Need Is Love, uh, which was directed by um, uh, Tony Palmer, which told the story of popular music. And this um, particular edition was uh, completely dedicated to the Beatles. And, um, you know, they just absolutely connected with me, resonated with me. Everything was about the Beatles after that for about a year, two years, and then punk happened. It was back to basics. It was about, you know, the single, um, you know, the clothes, you know, the attitude. And it, and, and it was, you know, it, it was for us, it was about us. There was kind of two ways, really, that you could kind of get involved with punk. One was to either form a band and we tried that, but it didn't really happen. And the other way was to start your own fanzine. There's a phone box just behind me, um, which basically, after we decided that we were gonna do this fanzine, that became my office at lunch times and also after school. Um, and it was basically down to me to kind of ring up the record companies and the PR people and try and blag interviews and free records and tickets. And in actual fact, that was the phone box that, um, that, that I called Paul Weller's house uh, from because I'd seen in Melody Maker, they had a, a, a fact file um, on the jam and it had John Weller's number. And I'd already read in interviews that Paul came from Woking and that he was still living at his parents. So um, it didn't take Einstein to sort of realise that, uh, you know, that was the family home. So I can remember vividly, you know, dialing the number, Maybury 64717, I think it was. And his mum answered. And, um, you know, 20 to, to the dozen, Mr. Excite, excited here. Hello, this is Gary Crowley from the Modern World Fanzine. Any chance of, uh, you know, um, speaking to Paul because, uh, you know, we're just starting this fanzine. We love the jam. You know, we've named the fanzine after a jam song. Any way that we can interview uh, Paul. And she said, calm down, calm down. Paul, Paul. Anyway, literally one minute later, Paul's on the phone. Um, you know, again, doing this fanzine. Da -da -da. Okay, well, 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 calm down, calm down. Why don't you come, come down to uh, Polydor Records uh, tomorrow and, um, and we'll do the interview there. So um, me and a pal of mine um, went down there, um, got down there about an hour too early, um, always too, too enthusiastic. And um, that was our very first interview um, for the fanzine. I heard that the NME were looking for a replacement for Danny Baker on the reception. And, um, and, and I ended up getting that job. Such an exciting time for music, 1979 going into 1980, all this wonderful post-punk stuff coming through. Um, you know, I really felt that I was in the center of the universe for a while. I got to meet a guy who was a Radio 1 producer lovely fella called Tony Howe, who then jumped ship and arrived at Capital Radio. And he called up one day, the office, um, you know, where I was working. He said, I think that, uh, you know, you could present a really, really good radio show. And honestly, my reaction was just one of utter disbelief. You know, 
somebody with an accent like mine, a strong regional accent, being given their own radio show on a big station like that was almost unheard of. Of course, that first programme, I can remember almost as if I did it yesterday, um, because, uh, you know, the, the nerves were going, um, you know, 200 miles an hour, I was talking 200 miles an hour. I always remember a classic mistake that, that, that I made, which, you know, I think I got away with, was that there was a record play, and I think it was The Big Bean by Pig Bag. And this was actually playing, going out on air, and I took the needle off the record, but realised I'd done it so quickly that I put the needle back down. Tony never spotted it, and no one ever picked up about it. So once I'd got past, you know, the first few links, I was having the time of my life. It's Saturday night, we're gonna rock the mic with DJ Gary Crowley. We're Supreme Team and we're really mean. Hey, hey people, let's have the party. Now kick off your shoes, relax your feet. We're gonna rock you, shock you, shock you till your body get weak. DJ, hey, hey. wherever you be, Supreme Team <laughs> is at the T.O.P. Yes, good afternoon, my name's Gary Crowley and welcome to Capital Radio's weekly boss record session. <laughs> When I started on Capital, I didn't even have a phone. I said, Dad, Capital have told me you've got to have a phone. We're not having a phone. I don't want a phone in here. I don't want people ringing up my business. Anyway, after much, you know, begging, we finally got a phone. And of course, I couldn't get him off him. Get, get him off it after a while. Princess Diana came to uh, Capital Radio and um, myself and Graham Dean, who was her favourite DJ, and Fluff and Michael Aspel were the four DJs uh, that were introduced to her. And, um, you know, there were photographs taken. And I remember showing them to my father and uh, he asked for a copy uh, to put on top of the TV. So that was his way of, uh, of showing that, you know, I think he was, he was quite proud. <laughs> Doing radio, I started getting offers as well in television. I did um, a program called Earsay, which kind of took over from the tube. My segment of the program was uh, having guests on um, reviewing the week's new releases. And yes, this is me in New York City, believe it or not, for a rather special reason. Now, I've come to think about it, I'm here, there, I'm everywhere. I could be in your house in five minutes asking for a cup of tea. Anyway, it's New York City for a rather special reason, because we've got someone, well, rather Scottish, and we have a famous bum wiggle reviewing the new releases. I'm not talking about Jimmy Logan, I'm talking about Rod Stewart. And the two of us may have collisions with our noses. As you can see, we've got very big hooters. So if there is a collision of the noses, viewers, please, we send our apologies. Oh, Gary, how sweet. Please take these. Yeah, it's time to wipe the football club. I'm on it. No, you've got to put them on. That's yeah. not quite suit. Yeah. <laughs> Did you two manage to keep up with what's going on in the pop world? Oh, no, we're totally out of oh, touch we now. We, we we've sold out, you know, we've sold our souls to rock and roll. I just don't like television, you know. Full stop. <laughs> I don't mind coming on and talking to you, and I like watching you on television. I don't like being on television. <laughs> Now, I mean, I've never met anybody who's sort of, um, so up on sort of what's happening as far as the pop scene's concerned. So it's certainly going to be interesting to see what you think of some of the week's new releases. Right, are you in the mood for a bit of live music? Yeah! The new single from Big Audio Dynamite, Medicine Show! Our next guest, writer-director Quentin Tarantino's movie, Reservoir Dogs, was the first film that reviewed on this uh, programme, The Bee. In fact, Tim Roth was our first guest as well. In fact, it, won, this. This in fact it won the Best Movie um, Award, um, as voted for by our viewers as well, for 1994. Yeah! Lee, let's start with you first of oh, all. Oh, no! <laughs> okay. Start with me. Come on, I'm right next to you. Yeah, all right. I'll hold your hand if you want me to. Do you actually remember the first time you ever met Walter and, and what you thought of him initially? Yeah, the first time... <laughs> Walter is always very unpredictable. Our special guest, Keith Richards, is here with us tonight on the beat. First of all, what can I say? Happy birthday. I'm sure there's probably a lot of, you know, people who are watching this who are in bands who have been, you know, banging out the um, mm, yeah. tapes to record companies no, not, for years. It's not easy. It was just one of them things. And we're lucky enough that it happened. Hurrah! It was one of the lines that... Gary Crowley is a yeah, that That's one right, did. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It it that rang out. very, very loudly. <laughs> Out of all the awards that you did win this evening, which one, this so, one. Which one meant, the, meant, meant the most? Best band, by, by the enemy reader. 
it went so quickly. Mm -hmm. and, and now it's like hard to actually remember how I felt during that time. I still love doing it. I mean, I'm absolutely passionate about it. It's what I do. You know, I still get a little bit nervous. But that's thankfully passes very, very quickly. And over the last couple of years, I've been doing a show called My London. That's been such an enjoyable show to do because I love London. I mean, I'm a Londoner through and through. And hearing other people's memories of the capital um, and, you know, those pivotal moments in their career is, uh, you know, something that I never tire of. I mean, if somebody had told me when I did my very first programme, which was, what, in 1982, I was, I was 19 years of age, that I would still be doing it after all this time um, and still being allowed to choose the music that I play, which is becoming increasingly, you know, rare, and also the guests that, that, that I interview, um, you know, I, I wouldn't have believed that at the time. So, um, you know, that's been important to me right from day one. You know, that, that never wears off, having that outlet you know I, I do not take that lightly that that is so important to me yes this is the cool cat and hot tin roof gary crowley signing off for another week hope you've all enjoyed the program let's make it a date next saturday afternoon that's the time five till seven coming up at seven o'clock it's mr peter young boy peter with pete's party until next saturday cheerio My uncle and my aunt, um, this is my dad's younger brother, uh, Dave, <laughs> what was that? What was that? What was it? What was it? Georgia. Georgia. Oh my God. What's that like? It was on my shoulder for a minute, wasn't it? <laughs>